Good evening and welcome to evening prayer on Thursday the 29th of August and good to read that you had a good day. <clears throat> o God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the uprights in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. The hands of the Lord work faithfulness and justice. All the commandments of the Lord are sure. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Selected verses from Evening Psalm, Psalm 81. Sing aloud to God our strength. Shout for joy to the God of Jacob. Raise a song. Sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on our festal day, for it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He made a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. I heard a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called and I rescued you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O my people, while I admonish you. O Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not bow down to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We continue our readings of Job, and we are now landed in chapter 8, where you read first the first 10 verses and then 20 to 22. And as you remember, there were three friends sitting with Job, and this is the second friend. Then Bildad the Shuhite answered, How long will you say these things, and the words of your mouth be a great wind? Does God prefer justice, or does the Almighty pervert the right? If your children sinned against him, he delivered them into the power of their transgression. If you will seek God and make supplication to the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, Surely then he will rouse himself for you and restore you to you your rightful place. Though your beginning was small, your latter days will be very great. For inquire now of bygone generations and consider what their ancestors have found. For we are but of yesterday and we know nothing for our, for our days on earth are but a shadow. Will they not teach you and tell you and utter words of their understanding? See, God will not reject a blameless person, nor take the hand of the evildoers. He will yet fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame and the tent of the wicked will be no more. Our Gospel reading for tonight is from John chapter 7. It's a rather long reading starting at verse 14. <clears throat> About the middle of the festival, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. The Jews were astonished at it, saying, How does this man have such learning, when he has never been taught? Then Jesus answered them, My, teachings, my teaching is not mine, but his, who sent me. Anyone who resolves to do the will of God will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking on my own. Those who speak on their own seek their own glory, but the one who seeks the glory of him who sent him is true, and there is nothing false in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you looking for an opportunity to kill me? The crowd answered, You have a demon who is trying to kill you? Jesus answered them, I performed one work and all of you are astonished. 
Moses gave you circumcision. It is, of course, not from Moses, but from the patriarchs. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath in order that the law of Moses may not be broken, are you angry with me because I healed a man's whole body on the Sabbath? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. The Pharisees heard the crowd muttering such things about him, and the chief priests and Pharisees sent temple police to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little while longer, and then I'm going to, to him who sent me. You will search for me, but you will not find me, and where, you, where I am you cannot come. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will search for me, and you will not find me? And where I am, you cannot come. Blessed be the word of the Lord. Praise the God. Praise be to God. Well, I was just wondering while I re was reading this that there was temple police. So just imagine that there there would be police in our churches, especially to. Um, see if everything is going correctly. There's always plenty of people in, in, in congregations that know exactly how things should be done. And, well, not exactly police, but sometimes um, it's um, you can do something wrong or perhaps not. And there's always discussion on what is the right way to do things. Anyway, that is church life. Well, the thing that, that struck me tonight is that um, uh, Bill Dead, uh, the friend of Job, he has a perspective that Job should repent of his wrong. Um, because if Job repents, then according to Bill Dead, all the material things that were lost will be restored. Um, because he says, if you will seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. And so he implies, actually, that Job is not pure and upright and that material prosperity is directly linked to one's righteous behaviour. Well, we all know that isn't true, because otherwise we would be really rich, all of us. But the situation is rather recognisable for me, because it reminds me a little bit about um, when I have some sort of trouble and I complain to a friend, so and so has been unkind, something was denied me and I thought I had a right to it, I had done everything correctly but still people are angry with me. So then a friend comes and you sit with them and you talk about it. And they support you, they comfort you, of course, because but they also know you well, so that they will tell you how you are and how you can be. And they sometimes could tell you that couldn't that have been because you always react in a certain way, that you actually perhaps elicited the unkind reaction yourself. But you know they love you. You only feel half supported. You also know that your friend means well. So actually you should take the feedback because that's what it is. A friend's feedback to help you do better. To help you act better. Thank God for friends. Praise God for friends. Amen. Let's listen to a song called What Does the Lord Require for Praise and Offering? The Scola Contorum of St. Peter's in Chicago.
Let us pray. <clears throat> we praise you, Lord our God, beyond all time and space. You who teaches us to labour and to rest. You who shares with us the brightness of your presence through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We praise you, Lord our God, beyond all time and space, that you have taught us to be nourished with your word, which is the bread of life, so that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. Blessed are you, Lord our God, beyond all time and space. In the beginning you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. We thank you for what you have given us to learn in life. We thank you for the many chances we get to try again and again to live good lives. You've taught us that your Son, our Christ, is the light of the world, and him we acclaim as all creation sings to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray a prayer of intercession. O God, our refuge and strength, our help in times of trouble, have mercy on the lands where the earth has given away. Have mercy on the lands where the weather has destroyed livelihoods. Prosper those who rebuild homes and strengthen those who rebuild hope so that entire communities may face the future without fear. And in the cycle of prayer for the East Midlands Synod, tonight we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Northamptonshire. And we pray for a peaceful resolution to the bloodshed and violence in Gaza and Israel and for the restoration of peace and justice in Ukraine, Sudan and every place blighted by war and humanitarian distress and natural disaster. And among those known to us individually, we pray for those who are currently very ill, including Margaret Davis, secretary of our former Rosal URC. We pray for those awaiting surgery, including Barbara Turner, and Elaine Dre and Alice and with Alison we pray also for Sunita and we pray for those who are recovering from surgery or illness or receiving continuing treatments including Natalie a young mother with three children and Chris Willis yet synod administrator and office manager we pray for Graham Garlip and for the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr for the Reverend Caroline Andrews and for the Reverend Hamish Temple, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, and for Moina Parish Priest, Moina's Parish Priest Father Andy. We pray for June Pevy and with Teddy for his housemate Jerry. We pray for Andy, his husband to Caroline, for two and a half year old Noah and his family, and also for Noah's grandfather Craig and for members of our royal family. We pray for those who are living with long-term conditions or in difficult circumstances, along with all those who look after them. 
for Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen, for Jean Schenk and for the Reverend Brian Schenk. With the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter Susie. With me for my friend Kelly and for Laverne. With Andy for his dad Mike and for Liz and Ruth. For John and for Irene. And for Cheryl and for Prince and the family as they care for her. We also pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially all who grieve for Don Buxton especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. And for all those who has, have lost loved ones. Let's be silent for just a moment to pray for those who live in our hearts. We praise you, Lord our God, for your presence as we pass through the shades of the night to wake to a new day. We praise you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and we thank you that we may ask all this in freedom. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. And let's finish with a wonderful song sung by very many children choirs. And we all know it. What a wonderful world. Oh yes, and you know what? I always um, add the links to the music and sometimes it's really nice to watch the video along with the music. So I invite you to, if you like, <clears throat> sometimes um, just uh, click on the, on the evening prayer again and just have a look at the links. This one's really nice as well.
night and sleep well.